49ers news and rumors mailbag coming your way on the 49ers report by Chat Sports. I'm your host, Chase Sr. Make sure you subscribe by hitting that red subscribe button down below. We just surpassed 44,000 subscribers. 45K coming next. We go live every Tuesday, 7 o'clock Eastern, 4 o'clock Pacific. That's when I answer all of your questions. Let's kick off this mailbag with this first question coming in from Gamer Outcast. 49ers finishing 12 and 5 going on a 7 and 0 run, finish second, uh, finishing second in the NFC West. Lambs lose their next 3 of 4 games. Okay, Gamer Outcast. If that prediction ends up being true, I'm going to have to Venmo you like $5. So, make sure you remind me if it actually does come to fruition. A 12 and 5 finish to the year would be miraculous considering that they're 5 and 5 right now and we're 3 and 5 before that win against the Rams. A 7 and 0 run would be absolutely lit. Uh, and if the Rams kind of falter here, that'd be pretty interesting. Let's take a look at the upcoming games on the 49ers schedule. You ask, we deliver. Vikings this week, followed by the Seahawks at the Bengals against the Atlanta Falcons. A lot of these games are winnable. Top five easiest schedule that changes every week depending on what the record of the opposing teams is. At Titans Thursday Night Football, that is Christmas week in Week 16, Week 17 against the Texans, Week 18 against the Rams. So it is possible that the Niners do win out. I think the math might have been off on that last question, but either way, if they win out, that's really impressive. Next up, Bowtie Chaplin. Do you think the Minnesota game is a turning point game? I thought the Rams win was a turning point game because you saw that momentum carry on into Jacksonville. And so many people and the detractors are going to say, it's the Jaguars. They're a terrible football team. They've actually improved almost every single week under Urban Meyer. Trevor Lawrence has shown me some flashes. That defense can be feisty. Josh Allen is really good. They beat the Buffalo Bills at home. I think you have to take stock in that. I think the Rams win was the turning point because it just kind of inserted some confidence into this team as a whole. Kyle Shanahan, offense, defense, that carried over into Jacksonville, and they dominated the last two games, outscoring their opponents 61-20, to dominated time of possession, and I think that confidence really goes a long way in just kind of carrying on for this team. This Minnesota game, it is so massive. I cannot understate that. You win this one. Man, Minnesota 5-5, five five, it really does wonders for your playoff picture. Yolanda Garza, do you think Elijah Mitchell will play on Sunday? To be determined. So we're recording this on Tuesday. Kyle Shanahan had said, we'll see how Elijah Mitchell fares in practice on Wednesday if he's able to give it a go in practice. He underwent that finger surgery early last week and just wasn't good enough to play on Sunday against the Jags, and it worked out fine. He got to see a little bit of Jeff Wilson in his first extended action of the year. He got to see Trey Sermon. He got to see Debo Salmon utilized as a running back. I love what Kyle Shanahan is doing in that regard. Just get the football in the hands of your playmakers. So not sure if Elijah Mitchell is going to play. I don't think running backs make or break a season or a game, so we'll just stay tuned for that. Young Lando, thoughts on how Talanoa Hufanga played? Yeah, so with Jaquaski Tart out, he was able to get some really good snaps over the last couple of weeks. Tart came back last week and got to see a lot of snaps. I like Talanoa Hufanga. I like his versatility. I like to coming out of USC because he can do a bunch of things for you. Everybody gets obsessed with the 40 times and the athletic ability. I look for instincts sometimes, man. And Talanoa Hufanga has them. He can play linebacker. He can play safety. He can play in the box. He can play against the run, play against the pass. He can play on special teams. So I think Hufanga really could be a late round steal for John Lynch and Kyle Shanahan moving forward. Corey Niner, should the 49ers trade Jimmy Garoppolo this offseason if he keeps playing like this? It's funny because there was that report several weeks ago when the Niners were really struggling from that Seth Wickersham book that the 49ers had turned down a second round pick around the time of the NFL draft from the New England Patriots who were trying to trade for Jimmy Garoppolo to reunite him with Josh McDaniels and Bill Belichick. It worked out for New England because Mac Jones has played very well. He's in the perfect situation and he's thrived because of that. If Jimmy Garoppolo plays excellent football, I think you have to entertain trading him if this 
current production continues. The last month of the year, he's been one of the most efficient quarterbacks in the NFL, according to the analytics. But when you look at the cap next year, Jimmy Garoppolo has a $26.4 million cap. Good job by producer Marsh for pulling this up really quick. Uh, that's according to Spotrack. That's a lot of money. And when you look in the future, you have to pay Nick Bosa potentially this offseason. You might have to pay Debo Samuel. You also are paying a lot of money to a lot of players who are under contract. The Trent Williamses of the world, Fred Warner, George Kittle. So if you want to continue to compete and you think that Trey Lance is ready to play, it doesn't make sense to have a backup who has a cap hit of $26.4 million. And if a quarterback desperate team hits you up and they're like, yo, We'll send you a first-round pick or a second-round pick for Jimmy Garoppolo. By the way, they don't have a first-round pick next year. Then I would certainly entertain that. But give a shout-out to Jimmy G. He's been balling out the last couple of weeks. Massive game, as I mentioned, coming up on Sunday. We'll, of course, be doing a watch party right here on the 49ers Report. Make sure you subscribe and join us by hitting that red subscribe button down below. Let me know who you got in this matchup. Type MIN for the Vikings. Type SF for the 49ers. See some super chats coming in. We'll get to those here in a few moments. But first, be sure to get those predictions in. If you like what we do here at Chat Sports, you probably like what we do here at Chat Sports in general, right? 49ers Report is killing the game. We're getting close to 45,000 subscribers. Our main Chat Sports YouTube channel, absolutely killing the game, though. Closing in on 270,000 subscribers. So if you like the Niners, you're, of course, subscribed to this channel, I hope. But if you like the NFL as a whole, we do a lot of the same things that I do on the 49ers Report on our main Chat Sports YouTube channel, in addition to covering the latest around the NBA, college football, everything that goes on in the sports world. We have you covered here at Chat Sports. Make Make sure you subscribe, youtube.com slash chat sports TV. A couple of super chats coming in. This one, a $10 super from Hitman L. Too many fake fans. How are you going to hate on Shanahan? Y'all act like making it to the Super Bowl is easy. Besides the hardball years, Niners were bad for a long time. Be appreciative. No unfaithful. I like it, Hitman L. And look, I discussed Kyle Shanahan being on the hot seat because a lot of fans were talking about it and a lot of fans were asking about it and a lot of media types across the nation were talking about the pressure cooker being on in San Francisco. I have always said that this guy is one of the top coaches in the league when he's right. Obviously, the first couple of weeks of the season, first several weeks of the season, he wasn't right. But the last couple of weeks, you've seen him find his groove. You've seen why I have been high on him. This offense has been moving. A lot of creativity, thinking ahead of the curve. He makes running the football look really cool. So Kyle Shanahan, if he were to ever get fired by San Francisco, he'd have a job ASAP. A $5 Super Chat coming in from Shyla. Hopefully I pronounced that right. If I didn't, I apologize. Shame on me. With the hopes of making the season good, Lance is getting no reps to his raw talent. So should we expect a training wheel season next year? I wouldn't throw out that possibility. Patrick Mahomes came along very slowly. But throughout moments in practice with KC during his rookie year, they were like, wow, this guy can really sling it. This guy is really special. We got to get rid of Alex Smith for him. Jimmy Garoppolo is under contract next year. So if Trey Lance isn't ready, Kyle Shanahan really likes Jimmy G. And if Jimmy G continues to play like he's played the last month of the year, then I could see them holding on to Jimmy G. It really all comes down to cap allocation with the dollars. And if Trey Lance is ready, if he's ready, doesn't make any sense to sit him. Bay Area for life. Is this a sign of a good coach with how well the team performs in the red zone? Niners have been great there. They've been great. Most efficient touchdown scoring team in the red zone this year. And it really is historical proportions. They are scoring touchdowns at a near 80% rate every time they get inside the 20. And that's really, really impressive. I mean, basically almost every time, eight times out of 10, they get into the red zone and in the red area, they put seven points on the board, which really is crazy. And it goes to show you that Kyle Shanahan is a very, very good coach. Now, there are a bunch of things that go to being a good coach. Creativity, locker room culture, being able to adjust on the fly. I don't think Shanahan did a great job of that. The first month and a half of the season, he has done that the last two, three, four weeks. But yes, when a team is operating well in the red zone, it comes down to play calling. It comes down to play scripts. It comes down to having a good feel as to what the defense might do. So to answer that question, yeah, it has to do with coaching for sure. 
doing a watch party on Sunday for this monster game between the Vikings and the Niners. Both teams at 5-5, five and five, right in the thick of things in the NFC playoff picture. It's going to be lit. It's going to be live. Hopefully the 49ers are going to be able to come through with a second consecutive home win. Make sure you join me. The party starts 4.10 p.m. Eastern, 1.10 p.m. Pacific. Subscribe down below. True Spartan, what do you think the offense will do to the Vikings also? Are the Vikings better than last year? It's hard to say. I think the Vikings are good. I think people are sleeping on them. I thought that the season could end up being a disaster, and maybe Mike Zimmer was going to be one of those coaches that could get canned after this year. They've really rallied. Now, the first couple of weeks of the season, they were bad defensively. They were inefficient and lacked consistency offensively. Kirk Cousins, outside of primetime, is a pretty good quarterback. We were having this conversation in the office earlier today. Who would you rather have, Derek Carr or Kirk Cousins? I honestly might go with Kirk Cousins. The guy can put up numbers. The guy can come through in the clutch outside of primetime. So that offense is good. Dalvin Cook, Justin Jefferson, Adam Thielen, they always have pretty solid line play. That defense is good. Now they're going to be without Dalvin Tomlinson, who's a really good defensive lineman because of COVID, and they've dealt with COVID issues this year. But the offense for the 49ers, it's hard to say because Mike Zimmer has had Kyle Shanahan's number in the past. But with the way that they've been playing, running the football, if they can establish the run, it opens up the play-action game, it opens up the, uh, the pass game, and I think the 49ers will be able to move the football. What Noodle 187 the homie, what free agents of ours should we keep in the offseason? Man, I don't know. I'll tell you this, Wet Noodle. I think it's time to pay Nick Bosa, and I think it's time to pay Debo Samuel. Do they have more years left on their rookie deals? Yes, but I think it's time to pay those guys. You paid Fred Warner after year three. Nick Bosa already set his career high for sacks with 10. Debo Samuel is having an all-time, and I mean all-time year, in franchise history and in NFL history with all-purpose yards and receiving yards, I would pay both of those guys to secure and lock those guys up. That's why I think Jimmy Garoppolo potentially could be expendable with that cap hit. David Delgado, 49ers will make the playoffs if Jimmy G keeps being a stud and the team keeps it rolling. Love that Ayuk is getting great touches. He is. He's getting great touches as Ayuk, and Jimmy G is playing like he did back in 2019. And for him to be successful, for the offense to be successful, they can't solely rely on the pass game. They have to get the ground game going. And that ground game during that losing skid was really just so up and down. That's the calling card of this offense. And when you play to the strengths of the offense, which is getting that ground game going and established, this 49ers offense can be pretty explosive. Two more questions. We also have a super chat coming in from Tommy Huxley, Ron Gallagher. Can we talk about the 49ers defense and how we're going to stop the Vikings wide receiver duo of Adam Thielen and Justin Jefferson? 49ers defense has been excellent last two weeks. And somebody commented in a video the other day, and they're like, let's not make too much of this 49ers back-to-back -back winning streak. I mean, one game and a dominant win came against the Los Angeles Rams. People were pegging them as the favorites to come out of the NFC. So you, you can't take that with a grain of salt. Are the Jags bad? Yes. But the defense, it sometimes all comes down to confidence. And this defense playing with a lot of confidence. They're getting pressure on the quarterback, though. That's been the biggest thing that stood out to me. Arden Key, he's been good. Nick Bosa, really good year with those 10 sacks. And then the linebacking core with Fred Warner has improved in the back end because of that has been a little bit better as well. $2 Super Chat coming in from Tommy Huxley. What's up, Chase? What's up, Tommy? Do the Vikings scare you? A little bit. A little bit because they're playing good football. They just beat the Green Bay Packers. And I think the Packers might be my favorite team in the NFC right now because Aaron Rodgers is playing at an MVP level and they can win in a variety of ways and the Vikings able to outlast Green Bay in a shootout at home. And this offense has started to find its footing with Minnesota. That defense with Mike Zimmer is always a strength regardless of the numbers that you look at. So I'm a little bit scared of the Vikings for sure. Before this mailbag wraps up, make sure you give me a follow on Twitter, at Chase underscore Senior. I tweet out 49ers highlights, all 22 film, all the best hot takes on the 49ers because, of course, I'm never wrong, right? So give me a follow, at Chase underscore Senior.